All right, thank you very much for staying with us here on The Full View. Good evening to you if you've just joined us. So a day after President Cyril Ramaphosa announced a state of a national disaster on the 20th of March, uh, the Human Settlements Water and Sanitation Department had to identify communities most at risk to the spread of the coronavirus. So it identified just over 2,000 communities across the country that would need urgent attention. On water and sanitation, those interventions were to focus on water services, infrastructure and access to sanita sanitation and uh, basically the sanitizing of public spaces and on human settlements the department had identified 29 areas of priority for de-densification uh, because if the virus were to reach those areas it would find a fertile ground to spread. Let's chat a bit more about this now and we're joined by the Minister of Human Settlements, Water and Sanitation, Lidiwe Susulu via Skype. A very good evening to you Minister, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. So, Minister, uh, there are quite a number of uh, great plans that you had put in place. How far has your department gone in terms of uh, deliverables in the 2,000 communities that needed urgent attention since the outbreak of the coronavirus? Okay. We had identified initially 2,000 uh, communities that needed urgent attention. But as time went on, we discovered that our Counting was not in line with the needs of the community. So the need grows as people see uh, us delivering tanks. They realize that they too might want to take, um, uh, a, 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 to be counted as part of those uh, in need. And so the it's an, a never ending cycle. As I indicated earlier, when I did speak to you, when you came to the command center, we had established a command center that was working together with our municipalities to understand what the need was, where we would put the tanks, and we had a shared responsibility with COCTA in assigning these uh, places and putting them up. So far, we've uh, delivered close to uh, 20,000 uh, um, tanks um, and uh, continuing. Uh, we had been held back for a little while because the tanks that we had brought needed to be put up on um, a base and uh, so that where people had access to, would have access to them. Yeah. Unfortunately, at that stage of the of uh, the shut the lockdown, the warehouses were closed, so we didn't have access to the essential cement and bricks that would mount and uh, that we were we would need to mount uh, the tanks. Yes. Uh, we've yes. now uh, got to the point where the warehouses are open, so we are hoping that it's all systems go, uh, but the need is very great. Uh, Minister, the department had also identified uh, 29 areas, I'm not sure if that has grown, uh, of priority for de-densification in mainly Gauteng, KwaZulu-Natal, the Western Cape and the Eastern Cape. What progress has been made uh, to assist those communities which are at high risk when it comes to the spread of the coronavirus? Well, that one was going to take a longer time than the water one. The water one is almost like you, you can put it on a system and it would be able to run on its own. The, the, the housing one needs interaction with the people who are concerned and get their buy-in into the possibility of reshaping the spaces that they live in so that we have the necessary social distances that we require so that we provide them with the necessary sanitation, necessary water, necessary uh, conduit for any emergency vehicles. We've been in consultation over a long period of time with some uh, NGOs who work for these communities. And uh, we've reached a point now where we have started in one, in one or two communities, which we will showcase in the week, uh, making sure that we are able to turn around the lives of the people. Yesterday, I went to hand over 50 houses that were built within a week in a community of Ikemeleng. This is a community of people in Rudapot who had been uh, living in tents um, hundreds of people in four tents. These are people who had been evicted by the farmers in the area. We were able to give them 50 houses uh, yesterday, and we are hoping that very soon the houses will be 72. We are looking at alternative technology, which goes faster, and that is what we've done. So in a week, we could build 50 houses. With two weeks, we will have completed the whole project with water and everything. Minister... We're going from yeah. area... Please go ahead. Sorry. We're going from one area to another, depending on the recept 
on the reception of the people and the need of the people. So we would like to say government is open to coming to assist those communities to move into better areas, but we don't want to impose our will on them. They know the risks, and we have uh, tried it out with a community in Gemeling, and it has worked wonders. Uh, we were there yesterday. It really was truly a momentous uh, time in our delivery. Yeah. Uh, Minister, I hear you speak about evictions, and I know that there have been quite a number of those challenges uh, in Cape Town as well as uh, here in Johannesburg pertaining to evictions during this lockdown period. I'm not sure if you're going to have enough time, but I also hear you say more than 50 houses in a week. I'm sure you'd understand the criticism that these should have been long been the solutions of government you know, without having been forced to look at them in the middle of a global crisis, you are able to deliver. Well, it's so... It is so much easier to criticize and find fault. Uh, the truth is, it is when you are in need that you look for solutions. And right now we needed solutions and the community was quite happy to take on these kinds of houses, which are called temporary houses, and we put them up with the consent of the communities. Normally communities have a choice whether they want a brick house or they want an alternative technology. And in most cases, they have not wanted alternative technologies. They have wanted brick houses. And that is how, how we have been delivering. But I think that going forward, we would need to indicate to them that that leisure of choice is gone. We will have to stick with a quickest method because we are really in need of decent shelter for everybody. Is there any indication about exactly how many people will be able, you'll be able to assist um, in the next uh, coming weeks uh, or perhaps to even the next month with uh, this uh, particular accommodation? Because I understand that it is also not far from where they would have resided within their communities. It is, it is within their community. And uh, at some point, I'd like to uh, you to sponsor an ad showing how it is possible to do that, if only to have the buy-in of communities who live in similar situation to say, if you, if you need help, we are here to assist you. You can get into your houses within a week, which is what we have done. Uh, but it is very difficult for us to impose ourselves on these communities, especially in this kind of situation where everybody is on edge. Normally, they really are not uh, open to government intervening in their space. It certainly looks like uh, there's uh, obviously a lot of work that you're still going to be embarking on in the next uh, coming weeks, uh, Minister. Uh, I wish we had the entire evening, but I, I can't let you go, uh, you know, without asking on a separate matter, Minister. The Amapungane has reported, uh, you know, about an affidavit by the heads of two water utilities, Amatole Water and Lipele Northern Water, alleging that you are behind a campaign to oust them, is it true that you or your ministry try to pressure uh, two individuals uh, from those uh, entities into using a certain technology to extract water from uh, sandy riverbeds and when they refused, uh, they were in trouble with you? Okay, um, we, are go we have ongoing investigations and uh, the case of Libelle is well known. We've had uh, a series of uh, hiccups in the running of the of the board of Amatole. I think we've had two chairs, three chairs of the board. And uh, so we decided that we were going to get into what would be an end of all of the problems that we have. We do forensics of all our boards as and when we get to a particular point, and we did forensics here. Why it has become such an issue worries me. Why do they protest so much? Forensics are necessary. This department that I'm in now is well known for an unfortunate uh, what culture of uh, impunity, getting away with wasteful resources, wastage of resources. It's we've been called by SCOPA and told that we are bankrupt. We've got to make sure that we change our system. I promised at my budget vote that we will deal with all cases that of irregular expenditure of corruption. We've now come to the point where we have completed a great deal of the work that we're doing. And so we were coming to the community and to through yourselves to say we're living up to the uh, responsibility and the commitment that we made at the budget vote that we would do something about the idea that we have a corrupt department. The Minister, department is yeah. corrupt.
but there is a culture which is unfortunate in our department. Mm. And I'm not going to comment on something that we're still investigating. We will await the outcome of the investigation and we will take it from there. Thank you. Minister, I would love, though, to hear from you. You know, I mean, there's wild allegations that are being made about uh, yourself in this affidavit and allegations that you intervened in a process on behalf of your special advisor who is said according to that affidavit, to have incurred millions in debt for a presidential campaign in the run-up to the ANC's NASREC conference for you. Are you saying these are lies? Can we just get that out of the way? We'll get it out of the way when the court processes are in place. I think that there are ways in which we are dealing with the matter which are quite sufficient. Those two um, CEOs are acting completely out of line with their responsibility, and I think that they have a lot to hide, a lot to hide, and they are hiding behind all these wild allegations that they're putting out. But I will not go into the detail. We will see the end of this in court. Thank you. So, Minister, there's also the issue of your uh, National Rapid uh, Response Task Team. Is that still together? Well, yes, we, we put it on pause because I want it vetted. So they're going through the essential process of vetting so that I know that I can count on each one of them to represent my department in our community in a way that reflects my own values and the department and the government's values. Uh, and I have had complaints about some of the people in the NRTT, and so I've decided that they will go for vetting. Uh uh, it, there seems to be a little bit of mistrust, uh, uh, Minister, if you say they're going to go for vetting now, uh, a process, I guess, which should have happened uh, much prior to them. Um, no, I see you nodding your head. You can explain that in just a few moments. But of course, I mean, you know, um, there are allegations as well that you kept quiet for a bit of time about members of your task team who were illegally raising funds uh, from entities under your department for what uh, others are calling a possible uh, 2020 further political bid. Could you clear the air, Minister, regarding that? Was there any um, um, allegations or do you know of any allegations where some of the members of that task team were raising funds without your knowledge from elements within your department? Okay. Right. Number one, I have stood for presidential elections in the ANC for the 2017 elections. That I did not hide. Why would I run a campaign hiding it now? If I wanted to run, I would still run. And I would make it known at the time that I would want to run or not run. These allegations are just pure allegations. What I have found out of the National Rapid Response Team is that there is a bit of waywardness in some of the people who are in the TAS team, and that is why I want them vetted. What the TAS team Minister, is, apologies, what waywardness? Well, there are two in particular, uh, and uh, right now the case is before the court, uh, before uh, the law enforcement uh, agencies and going to the court, and therefore it is not possible for me to discuss it. But two of them have been misrepresenting themselves and, my, and the department, uh, and um, this I will not have. There is a letter that was leaked, which was uh, not um, uh, the original letter. They changed it when... By the time it got to the media, it reflected in what? An electoral bid. That is absolute, absolutely not true. It's rubbish. But I will not have any corruption in my department. It doesn't matter what they do, where they go to, who they get onto, and whether the media covers them or not, I will not have corruption. When I was Minister of Public Service and Administration, I wanted a bill that was called an anti-corruption bill because I strongly believe that a good public service consists of a, a foundation of no tolerance to corruption. And I will carry that through despite anybody saying anything to the contrary to deflect us from our work. So, Minister, you're not ruling out the possibility of uh, again extending uh, your time in uh, uh, politics running again for the ANC presidency? I <laughs> I think it is outside delivering water. Right now, my most urgent my most urgent responsibility is to help the Minister of Education, Basic Education, to provide the necessary uh, water at tankers in the schools before we, we, we decide whether or not we should open schools. That is a burning need right now. What we're talking about is not on the table.
Okay. Minister, thank you very much indeed for taking time to speak to us here on The Full View this evening. The Human Settlements, Water and Sanitation Minister Lidiwe Susulu uh, chatting uh, to us there on a number of issues. Uh, of course, uh, some of the allegations uh, that have been made recently in the media about uh, the task team that she had uh, basically employed. There seems to be an element of mistrust uh, between her and that team. She says that team has to now go for vetting. Part of the allegations is uh, allegations of uh, raising funds allegedly behind uh, the back of the minister uh, for uh, what it seems or was touted as uh, a possible political campaign for the minister in future. The minister says if she wanted to, she wouldn't hide that uh, she wanted to again vie for uh, the presidency. And of course, we saw that happen before uh, the ANC's uh, NASREC uh, conference. So let's move on to other stories. Now, let's take a recap, in fact, of tonight's top stories.